Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to Cooking Live with Kristen. This is episode seven and tonight I'm going to be showing you some ideas that I have for some super quick and beautiful appetizers and desserts you can take to a party, even if you only have a few minutes, even if you get invited last minute, and even if you don't have time to do much prep work. Uh, they are going to be beautiful. Marlon's joining me tonight, so if you have any questions, please, please feel welcome to ask them as I'm going along. He will read your questions out loud to me, and I will be able to answer you in real time. So let's see, we've got Joanne, Lisa, Proverbs. Thanks for joining live, everybody. If you have questions, please feel welcome to ask. I'm going to do this concept I have for appetizers in three ways. One, I'm going to make a savory version. Two, I'm going to make a fruit version. And then three, I'm going to make a decadent chocolate version, which I guess you could use as a dessert as well. If you have questions, please feel welcome to ask. So what I've decided to do is in fact, this is what, how the idea came to me. I was in the craft supply store and I was walking through the floral department and I saw these floral cones, which kind of look like Christmas trees to me. And I thought, how fun would it be to cover them with plastic wrap and add different ingredients to them, kind of like adding ornaments to a tree. So we're gonna work with colors and textures and change color as we work our way up the tree to create a gorgeous conical or Christmas tree shaped vertical large appetizer. They come in lots of sizes. I, have, I found them in this bigger size, which is about 13 inches tall. Then these medium one, one of medium ones, which are about seven inches tall, and well, maybe nine inches tall, I guess. And then these look like they're about six inches tall. These would be the small ones. Uh, first thing I wanted to do was wrap them in saran wrap or cling film. And what's good about that is that your food's not gonna get on the styrofoam, but you could also reuse these if you wanted to. I'm gonna make samples of everything tonight with my but I also want to reuse these cones when I make my appetizers and desserts for Thanksgiving in a couple of days. And if the foam holds up, it would be fun to reuse them again for Christmas. If it looks funky or you get food on them and it's not easy to clean, you might need to toss them out and buy more. But you can find these styrofoam cones in any craft floral department. So in any of the big box stores like Walmart and Target sell them. And you can also find them at Joann's and Michael's and places like that. Or you can find them on Amazon and I've listed them in my Amazon shop if you need help finding them. Uh, for the first savory appetizer tonight, I thought I'd go with the theme of antipasto. Antipasto is one of my all-time favorite appetizers. <laughs> nice, thank you. Marlon's being typically 17 tonight, yay! <laughs> so to, um, the beauty of an antipasto appetizer, number one, you don't really have to cook anything. Everything pretty much comes as it is and you really are assembling it. But instead of assembling it on a tray, we're going to do it on one of these cones instead. A couple of things you could do to start out. You could cover this with a cream cheese or a pesto or some other type of sauce before sticking your ingredients in. And I thought that we would start with a cream cheese spread. If you wanted to make one of these yourself, you absolutely could. You could add fresh herbs or garlic or lemon or a combination of all of those things to your cream cheese. And I'm gonna spread it very thinly on the cling film covered cone. <clears throat> We're also going to be using toothpicks. That's how we're going to stick all of our ingredients onto the cone. So all super simple stuff that you have easy access to. And then as far as organizing and getting your color placement on the cone, what I've decided to do is work in contrasts. So a lot of the ingredients have a reddish nature to them, and a lot of them have a yellow or green nature to them. For example, we've got marinated artichoke hearts that we'll be using tonight, an assortment of cheeses and cold cuts, 
cherry tomatoes, pepperoncinis, and two different types of olives. I just really focused on the different colors and what could be good contrast on here. And I'm using plain old toothpicks, uh, which should be just fine for this. And what you want to do is make sure everything is drained well. Anything that comes in a marinade or comes wet, you'll want to drain it off first so that it doesn't uh, drip down the other ingredients on your cone. Can you see this okay? What do you mean? Can you see, uh, you know what, the camera could come down a little bit. Let's see how that goes. Is that a little bit better? So what I've done is mm -hmm. I've taken a cake plate and then inverted yeah, a better. bowl on top of there just so I could get some height. This is where the cone starts right here. And I'm gonna start with my artichoke hearts, putting half of the toothpick in the artichoke and then the other half in the cup. If you have any questions while I'm working on my first round here, please feel welcome to ask. Do you have a question? No. All right, what is, what's so funny? No, nothing, I was, I was watching Snapchat. Um, <laughs> is that pineapple you're using first? No, this is artichoke, marinated artichoke hearts. We're doing an anapasto themed cone for our first one. I'll do more dessert ingredients. We're gonna do a fruit cone second, and then we'll do a decadent chocolate one third and we'll be using sweeter elements in both of those, but for the anapasto version, it's all savory ingredients. So this first round at the bottom is marinated artichoke hearts that I drained before beginning because I didn't want that extra juice to drip all over the place. Yes, it's a styrofoam cone. Yes, it's a styrofoam cone that you could find at any floral craft supply, corner of a big box store or in a floral supply at a craft store. Um, you could also find them on Amazon if you can't find them at a local store. And I wrapped mine in saran wrap first. And I'm adding, it, adding the artichoke hearts with toothpicks and keeping them nice and tight together because I would prefer not to see the styrofoam whenever possible. I have covered the styrofoam with a little bit of a garlic and herb cream cheese. You could do that. You could skip that step if you wanted to. Okay, so we've got our first round of artichokes on there and true to form, I said I was going to really play around with changing the color every other round of ingredients so that we could really get um, some nice high contrast. So next round, I'm going to do grape tomatoes. And I'm gonna do two rounds of these so I can offset them. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Instead of the cream cheese, you could have uh, covered the cone, you could have brushed a little bit of pesto sauce on there first. I thought that at the end I might take a little of my leftover pesto and use a pastry brush and brush over the whole thing. I thought that might be interesting as well. Are you watching the comments, sweetheart? Of course. Because I see stuff coming in. There's no questions. Okay. Okay, so we've got our tomatoes on there. We could use 
Uh, let's not let's try to go with one round of each thing for a minute. Uh, okay, so tomatoes we went red, so now we could go back to something that's white-ish. Uh, let's see, or yellow or green. We could go with we could go with some of these green olives, which will be kind of pretty as well because they have the red pimento centers as well. Here we go. And then depending on which way you put them in, you could see the pimentos as well. Do you like olives, Marlon? Nope. Not at all, huh? I'm not. Be you, a fan of this you know what? There are lots of components here that you do like, though. We're going to put prosciutto and yeah. ham, well, that, yeah. and I'm going to make little roses out mm -hmm. of them. I think that you'll like that part. And obviously, not everybody likes the meat, not everybody likes the veggies, uh, but there's a little bit of something for everybody on an anapasto platter. Yeah. <sighs> All of these ingredients can be found in your regular grocery store. I happen to go to Costco for them, but doesn't mean you couldn't find them at a regular grocery store. Any comments, honey? No. Or questions? No. Can everybody see the cone okay? I love the smell of olives. Do you know that when we lived in Israel, we saw olive trees there? Oh, and did you know that olives off of an olive tree taste horrible? It's not until that they are marinated over a long period of time that they soften up and are edible. They're not edible right off the tree. No, I wouldn't have known that. The trees are really beautiful though. Oh, my nose is changed. Okay, so we've got our third round on here. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see. Isn't that texture just gorgeous? Next up, we're going to add some of our ham roses. And I've done a couple so far, so I can show you. I've got these beautiful little ham roses. And um, the way I do that is I take a piece of ham. I make sure that this shows up on camera. Can, can't see it there, so let's get this a little bit closer. Can you see what I'm working on now from here, Marlon? Yeah, gotcha. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to cut these slices of ham in half. Any ham will do. I'm using a rosemary ham, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to cut this two inch slice in half lengthwise, leaving it attached on one end and twist both pieces separately. Okay, then fold the whole thing in half and from the side that's together, not cut open, start rolling. And by twisting them both first, we get this beautiful little rosette. And we'll start attaching our ham rosettes for the next layer. I've got a couple others made here so you can see how cute those are. Just wanted to practice a couple before we went on air. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk about it again. We've got our ham cut in, the ham slices themselves are cut in half already, and uh, or we cut them in half. Then I'm cutting a second time lengthwise. So what I have here is a two inch wide piece of ham that I have about an inch uncut at the top and they're fully cut apart at the bottom, like that. And I'm going to twist each side of these two or three times. It's artichoke hearts on the bottom row. And then fold the whole thing in half. Is this good enough or should I turn the camera down in front of my hands to show these? I mean, you are kind of far. Okay, so. Yeah, I don't know. All right, we're gonna attempt moving the camera for the first time. We haven't really done this on any of the episodes yet. Let's see, I'll try. Okay, how's that for this spot here? 
Is that pretty good? Uh, not in the camera. Nope. <laughs> How about that? Is that in the camera now? Uh, a little more. There, yeah. If I wait. go right there. Let me see. Okay, it's so. A little lag. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. So this was our whole piece of ham. I cut it in half lengthwise, so now I have about two inches wide by the size of a piece of ham. I'm going to cut it in, oh, cut it in half lengthwise again. No, there's no pineapple on the bottom. It's just artichoke. Of course, we've got a, a difficult piece. Let's try this again. Piece I'll take that. Here. I'll eat it. Okay. Where was the other hand that was sitting out here? Okay, we'll try that again. So we've got our two inches wide half slice of ham, regular length. I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise. Okay, so we've got <laughs> so we've got one piece of ham cut in half where it's one inch wide here, one inch wide here, and attached by about an inch there. And I'm going to twist this side a couple of times. That other ham was thicker. It showed this technique better. I might do one more piece with the bigger ham. So they both rolled, fold them together. Then on the join side, I'm gonna roll it in half. Then stick a toothpick in it and attach it to my cup. Where's that other ham that I was using earlier? The ones we use for sandwiches? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's in there. Yeah, but I pulled it out. It should be out here. Right here. Ah, let's try that. Okay. This ham is a little bit thicker, so it'll be easier to show this technique a little better. So we've got our regular, can you, I can't see the, now, can you pay attention for me? Yeah. What does it look, am it's I on fine. camera? Yeah. Okay. So we'll cut this in half. Then using one half of it, cut it in half, except for one inch we left attached on this side. And we're gonna roll it a couple times here and roll it a couple times here. Doesn't matter if they go in the same direction or different direction, just matters that they're, they roll, fold them, in, fold them back together, and then roll from the join side. And you can see all those different twists give us a beautiful rosette shape. What are you doing? Somebody called me. Okay, we'll show it one more time on this side. This one's a bit of a mess, but you can still pull it all together because you're going to toothpick it anyway. How did you learn to do all this stuff? Uh, just experimenting. It sure doesn't hurt having uh, experience at being crafty with fabric in the first place. I'm going to lift this back up. And see how beautiful they look? Don't they look like little roses on there now? So I'm gonna move this back down so you can see what I'm doing. Look at it from afar. Yeah, it looks so pretty for a party, Lisa, I agree. And so I'm doing it in contrast. I'm changing the contrast of the shape and changing the contrast of the color just to add as much visual interest as possible to the dish. So now that we did ham, which would be in our lighter colors, we should go with something red for the next one. Tomatoes. We just did tomatoes. Oh. So maybe, well, let's see, what else? We could do Kalamata olives next. And then after no. that, we could do some salami or prosciutto and pepperoncinis. And if we can go back to tomato, we can do that as well. But we still have plenty to do before we repeat an ingredient. Tomato was on it. <laughs> That's okay. I don't expect you to remember everything. But I'm always right. Mmm. Did you hear that, everybody? Marlon's always right. That's good to know. Thank you. Okay, so we're done. We're done with the ham. So now we'll go to Kalamata olives, which is a, obviously a different color than the green olives. We've got this beautiful dark purple. 
which will be a nice contrast to the pink ham we just put on there. What? <laughs> I love these Jeez. so much. I love making a sauce out of the black Ugh. or black or purple olives. I'm plugging uh, my ears now. It's called olive tapenade. It's very similar to a pesto sauce, but it's made with olives instead of basil. So good. It's got garlic and Parmesan cheese. I would be happy to do a whole episode all about dips one day. You like some of my dips. What? You oh. like some of my dips. Yeah. You like my garlic cheese dips. Yeah. No? Okay, you like my sauces more than my dips. Yeah. That's true. Nothing wrong with buying a queso dip. Okay, so you can see those beautiful color combinations and even texture combinations. So now fire, yeah. we'll go to our pepperoncinis. Ooh, I don't know if I opened this one yet. How are we doing on time, sweetheart? I can't see from here. Oh, uh, 20 minutes. Okay, wow, it's gonna go. This takes longer than I thought. It's gonna be a long episode. <sighs> well, we'll see if people want to stick around for the fruit ones and the dessert ones. You know, yeah. Probably. Okay, so we'll do pepperoncinis episode, next. This is one of my favorites. He landed. How? He just texted me. And Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see the ESA has a connection at six, so. I thought you were saying we had to leave for the airport now. Oh, like, that's no, gonna no. be a problem. <laughs> Marlon invited a friend to come visit with us for yes, Thanksgiving. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now we've got some green up there. These are hot peppers. Yes, they're the mild of the mild and pickled of the hot peppers. They're called pepperoncinis. So lift that up so you can see. Next, I'm gonna do some salami. And for the salami, you could make little pinwheels out of these, which is fun. Were you telling me which one to use? <laughs> I'm always right. That's the salami. Okay. All right, these are super easy to make into little florets. What we'll do is add, move the camera again. Okay, so we're gonna line three of them. Overlapped a little bit. Fold it in half lengthwise. Can you see what I'm doing there? Mm. Can you see it on the camera? Yeah. Sort of, yeah. And then roll all three of them together. And voila, we have a little rose. What? Voila. That's cute. That's the way you said it. I like judging you. Okay. Yes, we all know that. Okay, so we're going to overlap three salami slices, then fold them in half lengthwise, then roll from one end. Do you make a spinach artichoke dip? Uh, yes, I can make a spinach artichoke, artichoke dip. Um, nobody in my house really likes that much veggie, <laughs> so I don't make it unless I'm going somewhere else, but I have made it before, yes. Okay, so it overlapped three salamis, fold it in half, roll it. Oh, you know what I found out? Mm. Um, you know Charlie Puth, right? Mm hmm. He, I found out he has perfect pitch as well. Oh, cool. Like me, yeah. Uh, Sub videos. That's exciting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because he produces and writes all his music mm -hmm. too, so I thought that was really cool. As pretty as this would be with where you didn't see the toothpicks, I think it's pretty important if you're doing this at a party to show the toothpicks for a couple of reasons. Number one, one so stopped. that nobody pokes themselves by reaching in, but also it makes a nice sanitary way for people to pick up their own ingredient. What fell? One of the artichokes fell. Okay, I'll pick it up. 
Yes, I am the only child. So, yes. And yes, that is me that you hear in the background. <laughs> yeah, people are saying oh, it fell off. <laughs> well, okay. I'll get to it when I turn it around. Thank you. I just love these little roses. You just roses. had like a stare down. You were just like... Huh? <laughs> it's funny. You had like a stare down with the camera. You were just like... Uh, you know what? I wasn't <laughs> looking to look at me. I was just looking to see oh, where... Oh, it looked like you were just like... No, like I was just down. looking to see if you that could see funny. what I'm doing. Yeah, that was funny. Oh, funny. Ha ha. Laughing at me funny. Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. You're used to it by now. Yep. I am just so happy with these roses. Roses? Mm. Little oh, rosettes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you can comment on the t-shirt now. Oh, everybody knows this is my t-shirt. Yay. Yes, I made the logo from the show onto a t-shirt in my red bubble shop. Hold on, I also, um, they have cotton tote bags there in red bubble as well. So I did some reusable grocery bags with cooking live logo on it. I thought that was pretty exciting. And we got Marlon a hoodie. He's going to go put his on so you can see it. His is pretty cute too. All right, so we'll redo the artichoke that fell. Repoke him back in. There we go. I think we could make room for one more salami on here. Okay, so when I'm poking it, there was the last piece. See that as I was rolling it up? So as I was rolling it, as I was rolling the whole thing up, that last flap is where you're gonna start the, the toothpick. That way it holds it into place. And I'm kind of going on an angle to get them in because look at how pretty those look when they, you see them on an angle. Now, if you wanted to make a pinwheel out of those, you could have added a little cream cheese, a piece of cheese, a green onion, or a pickle inside of there first. Oh, well, maybe not a pickle for this particular one, but we could do pinwheels as well. Um, I am going to do some cubes of feta cheese for my next round to do another texture, another shape, and whoops! <laughs> you, find you can't find it. I don't know Did you look at it in your closet? Yeah. All the way in the right? Huh? You look yeah. all the way in the right? Weird. Mmm. Who doesn't like a cube of feta cheese? Yummy. cute those look. Got the feta cheese cubes. I'm going to go back to doing a little more tomato at the top of here. The little Whoops. babies are asleep. Hmm? The little babies are asleep. Yeah. They've been sleeping on my bed all day. I know. I just wanted to know. I got a new faux fur throw for my bed. Well, Bjorn and Becker are usually fast asleep on the faux fur throw. They're obsessed with it, which is pretty darn cute if you ask me. Could you come see if there's any questions, honey? Yeah. Okay, then we'll go back to our green olives. So weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, would everybody like to see me go through this with fruit or is that pretty self-explanatory if I show you the different fruits I'm going to use? Because I think the other interesting piece to show you is how I do this with truffles and chocolate dipped strawberries and bananas. Which would you rather see me do? Because I think we're just going to go too long if I do both. 
and we'll run out of time before it's time to do the other podcast. <sighs> Can you look and see what other anyone is saying about that? If they want to see me do the fruit one or just move How right into the chocolate. How far ahead can you make this before serving? Oh, I would make this the night before so for sure. Chocolate. I'm going to guess that people would rather see the chocolate than the fruit one right now. When okay, I want the chocolate. When I make this for Thanksgiving, make all three for Thanksgiving, I will share the entire recipes and the photo on the... Uh, on the recipe page, you can find a link to the recipe page in the video description here. And I'll have photos of the fruit one after Thanksgiving. But if you wanted to do the fruit one for Thanksgiving, you could totally do it based on what I've shown you here with the antipasto, I think. All right, and then we'll just get a tomato on top. Two tomatoes on top. There we go. And there's our Anapasto Christmas tree appetizer. It took us about 20 minutes or 30 minutes to make it, but isn't that a showstopper to bring somewhere? Takes absolutely zero cooking skill to make. I just think it's absolutely fabulous. Looks gorgeous. And if you're going somewhere where they like Anapasto, uh, I don't think, I think that you would have a total hit on your hands. Okay, I'm gonna lift this off now. You can put it off in the background. What's in the middle of it? A foam, a foam cone that you could find at any floral supply store. So if you were going to floral supply at your big box store like Walmart or Target, you could find it there. Or if you're going to floral supply at a craft store. So anywhere that they sell the silk flowers, you would also find that foam cone. If you have trouble finding it, I have shared it in my Amazon shop as well. So now based on what we did there, the fruit one would have alternating colors. It would do strawberries, bananas, raspberries, all those things. But next up, what I want to show you is how I'm going to do this for the holidays for dessert. You put and cover, I'm gonna, you cover the foam with something. Yes, covered the foam with, uh, um, cling film first. I'm going to use one of the smaller ones for the uh, dessert one just to speed things up. Now if you wanted to use homemade truffles you absolutely can. I have a recipe for homemade truffles and I can post a link to that. I actually have already posted a link to that in the recipe page which is linked in the video description below. If you wanted to make a sweetened cream cheese to spread on here first you could. You would take plain cream cheese and add some sugar or some powdered sugar to sweeten it up. You could also mix half and half cream cheese with uh, marshmallow fluff to make it sweetened, or you could use Nutella. I'm gonna spread mine with Nutella first. Let's try to get all our savory stuff out of here. You can eat those cheeses now, I didn't use them. Huh? Oh. Are you not paying attention? I am. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to take my foam cone that I've covered in saran wrap and I'm going to spread a little bit of Nutella over it. I think it's more important to cover this one. Oops. It's more important to cover this one than the other one simply because. I don't want to see anything but chocolate on this one. And because we're going to be adding truffles to it, I think it would look prettier if, if you didn't see any of that white underneath. Yeah, big box of truffles. Yeah, this looks so good. So I wanted to do this quickly. I didn't have time to make the truffles ahead of time. If you have time to make the truffles ahead of time, I highly recommend using my recipe for making homemade truffles. They're super easy to make, and the recipe page also has a video where I show you how to make them. But I was doing this with, with very little time on my hands. So I bought some truffles already ready to go at Costco. And I, for my first layer here, I'm going to add truffles. So just like we did with the antipasto ingredients, we're going to take, can you see the cone all right? 
we're gonna take our truffles and we're going to attach them with toothpicks to the outside of our cone. Would you like to have a side job while I'm doing this? Because we're going to dip our strawberries and banana slices into chocolate and to put them in and around our truffles. Would you like to... Somebody said you dropped, you dropped the black olive or something and it went into your drawer. Oh, I did? Oh yeah, I did. Thank you, I'll clean that out later. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we need to keep adding these truffles to the cone and we need to melt chocolate for dipping strawberries and bananas. Both so, are pretty easy to do. Which would you rather do? I'll melt chocolate. Yeah? Because if I put truffles on it, I won't let put them on there. I'll just keep eating them. So. <laughs> at least he's honest. Okay, so I want you to go get a cereal bowl. All right. Hang on one sec. Can you imagine showing up to a party with a tree covered in truffles? You would definitely be the head of the party walking in the door with this. <laughs> or even just ser serving it at after dinner, putting this in the middle of the big table. People would be totally impressed with how cute this looks. What do you want me to do? Okay, do you see a bag of chocolate chips? No? Okay, so... There was, here it is. Okay, I'm asking him to put half of a bag of chocolate chips into a cereal bowl. I would want you to do a smaller bowl. Can you do the cereal bowl instead? Oh, yeah, my bad. All right. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, use the whole, the half a bag. Oh, We're going to use a half a bag. I think it's half a bag. Nope, okay. that is a half a bag already. Right. Oh, I know. I just, okay. no. That's fine, honey. Um, how long? Uh, and you're, what we're going to do when we're melting chocolate chips in the microwave, it's super easy to do, but you want to do it in intervals so that you don't burn the chocolate. So we're going to do 30 or do 20 second intervals. Just put it in for 20 seconds, and then when you take it out, you'll stir it and keep repeating that until it's. Um, melted. Alright. And hopefully I'll have made some. Have yes, go ahead. Cool. These are just plain truffles that have been dusted in cocoa powder. I have a wonderful recipe for them that's super easy to do on my website. Uh, but for this particular version, I did buy store-bought. So however you decide to make them, it won't be done yet. So you're going to want to stir them. You want to come do it in front of the camera so people can see that it the chocolate chips are definitely I can't not. Stir them. They're still like. They're st they're a little soft on the bottom, but they're definitely still whole. You want to tilt that up to the camera. So that's after 20 seconds. So you want to put it back in the microwave and do 20 seconds again, please. And I'll keep adding layers of truffles to my cone. I love how they end up being offset on here. It just, oh, so pretty. I'm offsetting them. What that means is in between two truffles, I put a truffle. I'm not trying to line them on top of each other. I'm trying to work in between the spaces. So because they are round by nature, working into the space between the two truffles on the row below, in between that space, we can get our roundness in there and end up having a tighter fit than if we tried to line them on top of each other. Should I come back and show yep, them? Stir, you can see that it's starting to melt, but it is not there yet. So give it another stir and then you'll probably want 20 more seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless you think it's super close, you could even move it down to 10 second entry. entry. Oh, try 20. 20 should be fine. I want to get nice and smooth so it's easy to just dip. How cute is this looking? Oh, that looks fire. <laughs> fire means good for anybody that doesn't know that. <laughs> 
That's 17 year old talk. Or teenage talk. Not what I would say. I wouldn't say, oh yeah, that looks fire. I wouldn't say that and assume that it means that it's delicious oh or my good. Oh look at that. That's so okay, satisfying. so is it melted now? Yeah. Well. Yes, it's melted enough. I don't want you to do it too much. It's very easy to burn chocolate when you're melting it. Okay. So just by, now that there's a couple of small, like, partial chips left in there but as you're stirring it the temperature it is, is at right now down, yeah. the, the action of stirring it is melting it the rest of the way so now oh and i'm almost done with this i'll be able to yeah. help you for dipping okay so if you want you could go peel a banana for me you want me to put it here yep just leave it there for a second because peel a banana <laughs> yep peel a banana did you know oh did you know that monkeys usually peel from this side I read something about yeah. that recently, that there's a more efficient way it's to easier. peel them. It just them. comes off a lot quicker, huh. I think. Have you tried it? <laughs> no, I'm not a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they know better than us, I'm willing to try. Sure. I'll take advice from a monkey. Hey. <laughs> I do all the time. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. She's funny, right? She's so funny. <laughs> oh, come on. That was funny. <laughs> There'll be karma for that. Well, there always is. <laughs> okay, we're almost done. So I'm doing a first layer of truffles on my cone. And after that, I'm going to dip strawberries and bananas and make like, so imagine this being the tree of a Christmas tree. And then the strawberries and bananas will be the decorations. So this would be assuming that the chocolate truffles are the branches. So now we have our, and remember I put Nutella on there first. That's just to cover up the base so that in those spots between, we're not seeing white cone. We're seeing um, just chocolate. Okay, my, so am I on camera, done? honey? Am I, is my job here done? Your job is done. You can go back to reading and taste testing in a minute. Unless you want to dip strawberries and bananas. Um, Where are the not. strawberries? Do you see them? There they are. Okay, so next I'm going to cut my bananas into a good size chunks, so about an inch. This part's going to get a little bit messy. We're going to poke the banana halfway into the toothpick, dip it into the chocolate. So when you miss the recording, uh, what are you making? I'm making a couple of different types of appetizers and desserts using the cones. Oh, somebody already answered it. Never mind. Okay. Using floral cones. All right, um, that's not working. What you, what's, your, what's your favorite chocolate? I like dark chocolate. Milk chocolate all the way. Your milk chocolate, yeah. Okay, I wanted to see if I could do this without having a... Uh, hardens the chocolate first, so I can't because I'm not able to get any of the pressure that I need for getting the toothpick into the cone uh, while the chocolate is soft and while the banana is soft. So I want to show you that I dip some strawberries and, and banana pieces in chocolate earlier, and then I let them harden in the fridge for a few minutes. So I'm going to show you again how I dip them. So I'm going to attach the slice of banana to a toothpick, dip it in the chocolate, and then at that point, you're gonna to need to set it on a plate to let it harden. And I'll do the same thing with a strawberry. We're gonna attach a strawberry through the stem, dip the tip of it in the chocolate, and then set it on a plate to harden. Now- And you place the bananas on the outside of the other toothpicks? What I, well, what I'm doing is taking the ones that have already set up, poking them, and then putting them onto the tree. Okay, whoops. <laughs> Might Blooper. Need... Yeah. There we go. Okay, so then I'll take one of my chocolate dipped bananas and do the same thing. So I'm working into those spaces where I, uh, in between the truffles, where you could see that little bit of Nutella. Oops. 
And so it was important to let the chocolate dipped strawberries and the chocolate dipped bananas set first. There's a question. Can you read it for me, please? I already read it. No, someone just read oh. something about strawberries. I just got it. Yeah. Where did where did you get the beautiful strawberries? Uh, I, I bought these at uh, my local grocery store. Yeah, okay, I just that so I've got chocolate like, dipped banana. It's lagged a little bit. And so I'm just alternating the placement of banana and strawberry and not trying to fill the whole tree. We filled the whole tree with the chocolate truffles. We're just, so that would be the actual like branches of the Christmas tree. And I'm thinking of the chocolate dipped strawberries and bananas as like the ornaments. So they're just extra decoration. But it was important to let these set up first before trying to poke them in. Oh, that one worked a little bit better. <clears throat> and so you could add as many as you want, as little as you want. I'm gonna try poking one into, so I'm gonna dip one now and see if it helps to poke it onto one of the, it helps to poke it onto one of the truffle. Well, the problem is that they're dripping. And I don't really like the dripping, so I will stick back to my original statement that dipping them and letting them set first was a better idea. But how cute is that? So now we've got chocolate and banana, or strawberry and banana dipped chocolate ornaments on a chocolate truffle tree. Are there any other questions? Oh, and do you wanna come over and give anything a try? Now would be the time. Yes, might need to lift the camera up again. It's still lower from when I was. Uh... It looks good. Oh, oh wait, it's cut off. Oh yeah, my beautiful face. Yes, we don't want to cut off your bit of beautiful face. Okay, so would you like to start with a chocolate dipped strawberry or banana, yeah. a truffle, or an antipasto? What? How do all this slow down? Don't so how do you pull it off? Great question. So what you're gonna do? I'm gonna take a piece of feta cheese first. I'm dying for this. So I'm gonna pull it off, just pull the whole toothpick out, and then it is your serving piece. Mm. Oh, and I want a piece of salami. A salami rose. 40, 45 pounds. Not fine. Of course I have to take oh, the top one off. And pepperoncini. I'm more of a savory lover than sweet, so I'm super excited for all so these. So am I, but... I know, but chocolate's chocolate. <laughs> yeah. You want to switch now? Yeah. Mmm. Oh, no. Oh, God, that is so good. <laughs> it looks good, too, though. I actually think the antipasto one looks cuter than the chocolate one, but chocolate's delicious, so, um, you know... I'm not as worried about chocolate not being as beautiful as the savory one. I think you can get by with chocolate being a little messy looking, whereas the antipasto, if it was messy looking, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? There's extra chocolate down here. I might just dip a strawberry in the melted chocolate. Mm. Yum. Uh-oh, someone says they didn't like being called a monkey. Uh-oh. No. Oh, what'd you do? They referred to him as a little monkey. Oh. I don't think her kid liked it, though. I think that's what she was saying. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't care. <laughs> I don't either. No, I don't mean that I don't care what her kid no, says. No, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't care. I don't, I don't care if someone calls me a monkey. Yeah. Does anybody have any last questions for us? Oh, we got a lot to clean up here tonight. You got a plan. You're gonna help clean up. I think we missed the I think we missed the point of the comment. Someone else is saying it was funny, so maybe we missed what was funny. I don't know, bro. I'm not your bro. You're just going back and forth. Saying I don't know what sweet, to do, you know? like, yeah. So what's your take on it? I like that one. Mm -hmm. Just because like I'm not a veggie. 
Yeah, but you like getting a pasto. And for all y'all veggie people out there, that's the move. <laughs> it looks so good. I think it'll look so pretty at Thanksgiving. Oh, crap. You're the toothpick. <laughs> Ashley's craving salami. Now, I always crave salami. I wish I could eat it every day. Salami and cheese, yum, yum. Thank you, our prosciutto too. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I hope we gave you some quick and easy ideas to make beautiful appetizers or desserts for your upcoming holiday parties. If you would like to see these recipes, there will be a link in the video description for my homemade truffle recipe, as well as the ingredient list for making both of these and um, on Thanksgiving or Thursday or Friday, I'll have photos of all of the ones that I, excuse me, I made for my party, including a fruit tower, the Anapasto tower, and the uh, decadent chocolate one. If you have any other questions, please always feel welcome to ask them in the comments. Once this live goes to a recorded version, we get notified from all of those comments as well. Special thank you to Marlon Amdahl, my son, for joining us tonight, for uh, asking the questions out loud, and for doing all the taste testing and approving. Uh, Marlon is a music producer, and if you'd like to see more of his music, I will also post a link in the video description to Seltzer Beats, which is his oh, YouTube up. channel. Should we have the kitty say hi? No. All right, we won't be doing a show on Thursday. We normally do this live every Tuesday and Thursday evening at 5 p.m., but we are in the United States, and Thursday is Thanksgiving, so we won't be doing a yes, show sir. Thanksgiving, I, but we will be back next week, Tuesday and Thursday. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.